Hi, good afternoon, Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, Tom. Hey, y'all. And guess what day it is? It's Friday. Not only is it Friday, it's Friday of a three-day weekend. Woohoo! Yay! Which is a good time to say that we're not going to be here on Monday. Three-day weekend for us, too. Right, Tom? Did we decide yep. we're not going to be here on Monday? Yeah, we yeah. did. <laughs> So it's like, uh oh, we, not good. Tuesday, guys, be safe. And oh, we're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> Do that at the end. Uh, I haven't pulled this up on my phone yet. Let's see. So we have a special guest coming on a little bit later, maybe, right? Hey, Paula. If she can get on, we're hoping. Um, Tom, what you're looking at over there? I'm looking at something I'm going to share here. Okay. Yeah, I think this is cool. We haven't talked about uh, uh, jobless claims in a while, have we? Nope. I don't think we have. Um, this uh, jobless claims come out every Thursday, as we know. And if you, this kind of goes back to like 314, where like initial jobless claims were at like 300,000 because this is like in millions here which is a pretty big number actually but if then you remember it like got 10 times bigger at 3.3 .3 and then 6.9 and then 6.6 .6, and this orange bar here is kind of the cumulative initial jobless claims and here we are on the 9th, which still is like a couple of weeks ago. And it's all the way up to 36. Um, the number yesterday, I think, was still around two and a half. I mean, this is it's like 2.7, 2.4. And, and, and yesterday was like two point something. Still, all of those are like 10 times larger than, than, than what they were like in the middle of March. I know that hiring people right now is really uh, kind of tough because of all the unemployment money that's floating around, sloshing around out there, but we've got to be heading towards, towards the time when, you know, there's going to be more supply of labor than it is demand. It's inevitable. Yeah. No way around that. So I guess, I guess the, 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 the point is, it's really it, it might be tough at the moment or if it is tough at the moment hang in there i think the uh six hundred dollars goes uh federal kicker goes away middle of july yeah but don't forget they're talking about extending it now yeah. so but they Are haven't they extended it yet would they would they would they extend it with another just six hundred dollars on top or maybe since they've had a little time to think about it they've sobered up and would do something more economically rational any chance uh yeah i i was one of the people that said there's no way they're going to put the six hundred dollars on top no 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 of course it's going to be a gap filler so you don't want to listen to me because look how wrong i was uh the the information coming out is they're just going to extend it in the same exact way that they've been distributing it. So, well, you know, one of, the, one, of, one of the explanations that, that we heard about that was that the computer systems at the state level who actually administer all of this wouldn't really have the ability to do the math to figure out how to add something on so they wouldn't have been able to implement. So that's why they said, what well, the heck with it, just throw it in on top because that's the only way we can implement something. But they've had some time to think about this now. So you would think that, no, oh, silly me. You would hope that somebody would have been, you know, working on a more rational way to do a round two, but. Well, and, and I think the other piece was not just that they, you know, the computers couldn't do it and figure it out, but the speed at which they needed to implement this, it was just 600 bucks to everybody, then we can get it done. Otherwise, how long is it going to take to roll it out there, right? But now, it, like you said, it's been out a while, so fingers crossed, but again, I, I, I'm not... 
horribly hopeful just because I was so wrong last time. I was so sure. There's no way. How, how is that going to help? How is them putting that $600 going to get people back to work? Isn't that going to encourage them not to work? So, uh, but that was before we knew about the PPP monies and all that stuff too. So, let's see. What does Robin say? Thinking about posting ads, they say unemployment won't last forever and hope that good employees may realize that everyone is going to look for jobs soon and they should get a head start looking. That is yeah. really good. Yeah, I love that. You better start now because pretty soon uh, everybody everybody's going to be out there. And what percentage of the population is going to be out looking for a job? <laughs> Some of them might be more qualified than you. So start today. And you know what I love about that is the people that are the most motivated and probably most desirable would be the ones that would be m more persuaded by an argument like that. I mean, that's that's great. Yeah. We're taking notes over here, Robin. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Guess what's going in everybody's ad? Guess what you're going to see on Indeed on Monday, right? Yeah, that's really good. Um, Karen, yeah, you're right. If you aren't eligible for regular unemployment, you don't get the 600 bucks. Yeah, that's very, very true. Um, but as, as we can see by those numbers, a lot of people are eligible. <laughs> a lot, a lot of people are eligible. Uh, so hopefully it's that's not just going to be the only story. Uh, we have said, I, I know quite a few people that are having some decent luck advertising. Um, I've had luck. I know, um, trying to think where I've seen this information, if it's shareable or not. Yeah, actually, no. Um, I, I know of quite a few companies, though, uh, across the country that are having good luck sharing. Um, at least one company in Texas, uh, at least one company in Oklahoma, at least one company in Florida. So uh, there are, are, are places that are having good luck um, um, advertising. I, I really think that Robin's strategy is going to make us all a little bit more successful, though. Uh, let's see. Shannon. Shannon got the $600 under self-unemployment. Okay, cool. Uh, Matt. Matt got his self $600, right, for quite mm -hmm. a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. He figured that out. And and so I, I'm thinking anybody that is able to figure out how to do that and use it, yay, more power to you you are able to make that work as well. Uh, anybody else have any other money stuff going on? Anybody get PPP monies or idle monies since yesterday? Is that me feedback? I'm hearing feedback. Is that coming from me? I'm barely talking about Okay. Well, I can turn down my volume. It might just be me. Uh, is anybody else getting the feedback? I want to get rid of it if you guys are hearing it too. If it's just me, I'll ignore it. Kind of sounds like, uh, reminds me of Charlie Brown, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it looks like everybody's kind of uh, mellowing out here on on the amount of money they get is what I mean is if your any earnings are too high, you won't get any UI including six hundred. Oh yeah, that's true. If you're making over a hundred thousand a year, right? You're not getting any any monies. Robin hears the feedback. Sarah hears it too. Let me know if it goes away. Okay. Um let's hear talking. Yep, it goes away. It's it's you. Oh, could it be Kate Cal? Because you guys are in the same house. No? Well, she's not even. She's not even in the. She's not even logged in. But I turn it back on. Does the feedback come back? Yeah. Okay. Let me let me try something else. You guys keep going. All right. All right. Um, Beatrice, self-employed here. Got my PPP loan and it's put aside. Now I've got an idle eligibility for a huge amount of money. I'm confused. I don't need the idle or want it, but what about the thousand dollar grant? Should should I just say I want a one thousand dollar loan then? All right. So 
my understanding about, and I might have this wrong, we'll let Tom, after he figures out his problem, we'll let him chime in as well, because he's the, he's the expert, not me. Um, but my understanding is that the $1,000 grant is not actually a grant. They changed the name on purpose. It is an advance on the loan, and that advance turns into a grant. So I'm not sure that you can just take the $1,000 without accepting the entire loan, but why couldn't you take the loan and then just return all the monies if you wanted to and keep the $1,000? What, what's your take on that, Tom? Oh, you're muted again. Um, so Beatrice is saying that um, she got her PPP and she put it aside. She also got um, approval for an idle loan. She doesn't want it, it's too much money. Um, but what about the $1,000 advance? Um, can she just take the advance and not take the, the loan? I told her I didn't think so. I thought that the advance was the advance on the loan part of it, but that there would be no reason why she couldn't take the loan and then just return all of the money because the $1,000 turns into a, a grant. Does that sound right to you, Tom? It sounds logical. Um, <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but the point is you could go ahead and take the, the, the PPP loan and at the end of you don't spend a nickel of it, you can turn it back and hopefully you'd be able to keep the thousand dollars that was supposed to be the, the advance that you weren't supposed to have to pay back to begin with. So I mean, Tom, did, you said PPP, did you mean idle? Because she's talking about the idol right now. Because the thousand dollars is the advance on the idol, which is like it could have been up to ten thousand. Right, but she has one employee. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're employee. right. Yes, absolutely. I believe. I. I, I don't know. I. You know, if it were me, well, you know what I would do. I would take the money and forget that I had it, and hope that I didn't need it, and. 11 months in, I could give it back and it wouldn't cost me a penny. Yeah, but it's, uh, the, and, and here's the reason why, Beatrice, I know it sounds like we're just being like obnoxious, just keep pushing this money down everybody's throats. Um, but we actually have a reason though. The whole reason is even though, or, or the, the bigger part of the story is that even though right now you might not need the money, are you 100% sure that in eight months you won't need that money? Because in eight months, that money might not be available to you. The chances are, are good that that money won't be available to you. It was provided to you now, you didn't accept it, and it's that opportunity is not going to come up again. So that's, that's where the little sticking point is. None of us are real confident about what how this is all going to play out i mean we we've been wrong about so many things that uh we're, we we're all trying to just sort of cover our hides because we don't know what's going to happen in the future and that that's where that that's our, our push for accepting the money and just not touching it is coming from hey Denise, good to see you um what will be forgiven first so the, um, I think what you mean is the PPP or the, the idol, the thousand dollars. So what happens there is that those two things are not on top of each other. So if you're spending your PPP money, let's just say for easy math, that you had $10,000 in PPP money and you had a thousand dollars in your idol advance, your PPP monies and your idol together is not 11,000. It's 10. Is that helpful? So they kind of play together. You know, um, Leslie's been asking about a hundred dollar fee for the idol. And it depends if the loan is under $25,000, as I understand it, there's not supposed to be a fee, but for over 25,000, there's a hundred dollar processing fee but you don't start paying anything until 12 months after you get the money. If that helps with that. 
Uh, yes, Karen. Yes, good reminder. Make sure to start using your PPP or at least um, figuring it out based on when it landed in your account. And, and even though that has changed a little bit um, and moving forward, that might it might change. You're either going to use it or you're going to define it. It's a little bit different. Don't don't forget to pay attention to that and look at that that date. Um, <laughs> okay, so Lucy is no longer with us. You have a good memory though. Le Lucy is Molly's predecessor, kind of, um, but Molly is the new little puppy. Yeah, uh, Molly's running around here somewhere. Maybe we can get her cameo appearance before we're done. Molly uh, is a yes, Beatrice, take half, at least half the money and uh, idle and hide it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't need it, you can hide the whole thing. You know, just put it in an account. Don't touch it. If you don't need it and, and you're uncomfortable with taking it, just just a safety net. It's just a nice little safety safety yeah. net right there. I mean, we. it's not unusual for us as business owners to get in a pinch where we're short of cash. We need something to make payroll or, or whatever. And has anybody ever like used a credit card or something because they were short on cash and maybe didn't pay the balance off and wound up paying interest that was 18, 20 some plus. Yeah. I, I've, I've been in that spot before too. Mm -hmm. And using debt wisely and not, you know, being extravagant on debt and, you know, debt free. I mean, all of that is really awesome. But if you get to a point where you need to borrow some money from something, three and a half percent or three and three quarter percent is a heck of a lot better than, than credit cards. The big part about borrowing money is the interest. So, you know, 3.75 is just, and, and don't for, forget it's over 30 year period also. So, I mean, it's really just such beautiful terms that it really is um, a, a beautiful little, uh, uh, what am I, what am I thinking of Tom? The thing underneath the, the high wire safety net. Safety <laughs> net. Right, yeah, right. It's a beautiful little safety net there really low risk safety net, I guess, is, is the piece. Um, Amelia, I'm confused. I got my PPP money and I got the advance from the idle. If I use 100% of the PPP money, will the advance for the idle be forgiven? It'll roll in together, Amelia. So you, you don't get the thousand dollars on top of your PPP. It will just be your idle thousand dollars will just be considered that it's part of your PPP money. Is that more clear? Hopefully. Audrey, yes, indeed. She agrees with me. Yay. Tom, there was a question up here that I'm not sure I understood. We need your help here. Where is it? Um, it was the one about unemployment. Where'd it go? The six hundred dollar. Oh, here it is, David. Self employment. Uh, 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 I'm not sure if it says check self employment unemployment approved six hundred dollars. County grant approved five thousand dollars. You know what that is? I guess uh, there's a lot of state and local funds out there for small businesses too. So county grant sounds like it. She was able to score some grant money at a, at, a, at a county level, a local level, which is really awesome. And it said grant grants are monies you don't have to pay back. So that oh. is free money. That's like walking outside and just finding however much money it is, just finding on the ground, $5,000. There's Molly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a flea on her belly tongue? Huh? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Look at that cute little belly. Oh, little puppy belly. How do how do people keep their faces off those soft little puppy bellies? Oh, it's so cute. You know, she's she's a she's a sweet dog. She uh just turned eight yesterday. Eight weeks. Eight yeah. weeks, right. She peed in the floor earlier, but I guess it happens to all of us occasionally, right? <laughs> Too much information, Tom. Too much information. <laughs> oh, 
Um, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to go there. Okay, so let's see. Okay, David, yes, that is another grant, county grant. That's awesome. Here um, where I live, too, there's quite a few county grants going out for a co um, companies that are, 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 are very small. If, you're, um, if your company is bringing in, like, less than $100,000 a year in revenue, or it might even be $50,000, there might be another one you can get um, additional grants, which is awesome. Um, okay, so Leslie wants to know, what if I got my PPP and advance on the idle, but turn down the idle in the end? Then again, that's why that grant rolls over into your PPP, Leslie. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Uh, I know everybody's so adorable. Molly's so cute. Uh, okay, Sarah says, can you touch on what I'm guessing will be the next big issue when the PPP runs out and our sales can't support all our staff? Are we due for more layoffs? The PPP extension won't help since I've spent it the way I thought was best and it will be up in two weeks. How should I handle that? Plus having my head count by June 30th. You know what, Sarah? Smart. That's, that's exactly what we're dealing with right here. Smart business moves, right? So trying to think about it now, how are we going to manage this? We're going to be out of money. We're going to have we brought all these people back to work. We've got full, full roles, um, roles right? How are, how are, how are we going to manage that? Tom, do you have plans for that, what you're doing? We've got contingencies, but I'm not spreading a whole lot because well we've got reason to believe over the next couple of days or the next couple of weeks rather that we're going to be seeing additional changes and you know Sarah acknowledges that they might extend the window but we don't know what other changes might be there as well in terms of the rules all of the uh, guidance that, that, that came out about the uh, forgiveness part of, of the PPP, we have good reason to believe all that's going to change. So what does that mean by the June 30 day? What does that mean by, you know, even how are you calculating your headcount and forgiveness? I mean, just so much of that is, is, is unknown that for the most part, I think you just got to run your business in a way it's rational based on, on, on what you know now. And, once your, your eight week window runs out, if you've spent all your PPP money and you've got more people on your payroll than what you've got money to pay them, I guess that's kind of where the idle money comes in as well because you can use your idle money for payroll. And if it looks like it's your, at that point, once you're at that point, if the rules are saying you need to be at full employment by June 30, then you would have to say, well, does it make sense for me to, use my idle money to keep people working for another, another, you know, couple of weeks. Wait, two weeks. That's exactly what Sarah's asking too. But you know, you I, won't know until you get there, what even the rules are going to be. Yeah. But you know, hopefully you've got your idle monies and this is, I guess, a really good example of why you would want them, even though you're thinking that you might not need them because you don't know what you might need until you get there. Yeah, that that's awesome. That bringing that up is perfect for an answer to Beatrice. That's why one more reason why you might never have thought of that. Now here Sarah is in this position. Hmm, she might actually need those idle funds just to be able to keep her FTE numbers where they need to be. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Great, um, great thinking on that too. Sarah, I've got to give you props for that. A lot of people are not thinking ahead and trying to come up with those contingencies and figuring out what's the next move. So good job on that, Sarah. Based, um, based, based on thing. what we know now, Sarah, I think it, the answer to your, 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 your question would be, yeah, use the idle funds to, to keep, I mean, the details are in that big spreadsheet that we, we, we shared the other day to be able to answer that for sure. But I wouldn't spend a ton of time crunching all those numbers now because that spreadsheet is going to look different two weeks from now. At least we have good yeah, reason. To that. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's been in a week, right? Because they said two weeks a week ago. You don't know. You just don't know. But yeah, again, don't know. there were some things that were supposed to happen in three days that never happened. So. <laughs> That's true. It's true. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So Beatrice says, do people get the thousand dollar grant first 
and then the loan eligibility. I got the loan eligibility and no thousand dollar advance. How does that work? Thank you. We've heard both ways, right, Tom? It has happened both ways. I've experienced it that it happens both ways. I know some companies that have gotten what now is the full allotment of, of idle funds, which is uh, 150,000, even though the SBA doesn't admit it, with zero um, advance money. So I, I don't know. And they are admitting to that 150,000 now, Tom. That, that okay. that's in writing. Yep, that they have put that in writing now, that they mm -hmm. capped it at 150. But we also heard that they might be reversing that if they get more funds. And if you get the 150, it's actually they put the 149.9 in your bank. They take that hundred dollar processing fee out at the time that they disperse the loan. I did not know that. Yeah. Ah, okay. Wow. But if it's, if it's under 25, supposedly they don't take that hundred bucks out. So whoever was asking about that hundred bucks, maybe it was Leslie. There you yep. go. Already gone. Already gone, Leslie. Don't even have to worry about it. You've already paid it. Uh, hey, Maria, I see that you're watching on there. Good to see you. Um, I thought I was wanted to say something else about idle processing. You know, I really need to be better with my notes here. Somebody had asked me a question earlier. One of these days I will get back. Won't be today. Uh, okay. Are you guys, uh, you guys Let's talk about, let's take, let's take a break for a second. Are you guys closed on Monday? Us? Yeah. We're not closed. In Olympia, we, don't, we don't close. We are, uh, we work half a day. And so what we do, so this year I did think about just closing and paying everybody, right? Because we have PPP monies. Um, but one of the things, so our people voted on how they were going to manage holidays. They decided what they were going to do. And what they voted on is everybody in the whole company works a half day. Nobody gets approved to have the day off. And then it feels fair to everybody because it was this, you know, we started this maybe six, seven years ago because people used to get so mad. Such and such employee always gets every holiday off because she puts them all in, you know, same time, blah, blah, blah. It's not fair. She doesn't have kids. And <laughs> just the whole it's not fair thing. Right. So they all decided that this was fair. Everybody has to work. Everybody works a half day. And then everybody is off by noon. So this year what we're doing, because we have PPP monies, is long. So what I did was I didn't want to change that whole fair structure thing. So I sent out um, a Facebook post saying everybody who works their scheduled day, their regularly scheduled day will get full pay, get paid for a full day. And they will get, um, and a lot of those people aren't um, eligible. Well, maybe not a lot, but some of those people aren't eligible for holiday pay at all. So everybody will get a full day's pay and they'll also get points um, because we have a point system that we're using. And if you get 40 hours in a week, you can earn up to a five hundred dollar bonus, but if you don't get those forty hours, you can't you can't earn that five hundred dollar bonus. So a lot of people were like, I want to I I, I don't want to work half a day because I need my hours so that I can get my bonus, but I don't want to work a full day. It's a holiday, so I was like, okay, everybody gets all the money and all the points. So you know, I, I'm the winning boss today. I'm the winning yesterday, not so much, but today. <laughs> and yeah, so I Sarah, Sarah just made a good point here that any holiday pay that you're paying would be PPP money if you're in your eight week window. Yeah, and I am. That's why everybody's getting it. So, but I didn't want them to not work because then we got the problem of having to push jobs. You know, we're going to have to bounce jobs around, move jobs around, and then we're going against what they said was fair. Right. So I, I try never to go against what the employees think is fair ever. Uh, so, so we didn't. Uh, yeah, I love that, Sarah. Same as me, right? Closed with one person working two solo jobs. It's her first day back from unemployment. Ah, that's funny, right? I do have another employee that is 
uh, wants to work a full day because she wants the opportunity to get uh, overtime pay. Because normally in our company, you're not allowed overtime pay. Do not go over 40 hours or your pay for performance will go down if you go over 40 hours. But right now, if you go over 40 hours, not only do you not lose any pay for performance points, you gain points. So she's like, can I get full pay, full points, and bonus points if I work all day? I'm like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So so, so we got that going on. We, we have, do have people that are like, I want to work more. Give me more hours. I can't go anywhere anyway. I'd rather work. All right. Fine. Uh, but this is also an odd employee. This was an employee that was offered unemployment or reduced like a work share program. And she was like, no, I'd rather just not go on unemployment. I don't care about that $600. I just want to keep my job. I don't want to jeopardize my job or have anybody else have a chance of getting my job. So, you know, different kind of employee. I don't think the majority of our employees are like, you know, the majority of my employees aren't like that. The rest of my employees are, woohoo, what can I do to get that 600 bucks? That's all I care about. Uh, but, but not her. Ah, wow. You know, <laughs> I can I, I'll, I'll tell a story that was kind of kind of cool and could be an opportunity as well. I was talking to Derek earlier today, and normally we have a cleaning business today business call every morning at ten o'clock, but we had to shift it to two o'clock because he was giving away disinfectant today. He did a uh, a, a program. He uh, went to Facebook and was looking for companies that would partner with him and doing a promotion where he could give away, you know, disinfectant since you really have a hard time finding it in the grocery store. Um, but as commercial contractors, it's, it's not terribly difficult to do. So there was a hotel that, that wanted to do this with him. So they did it in the hotel in the parking lot of a hotel and the hotel has a PR firm that it worked with. So he got local TV coverage. He got newspaper coverage, uh, a radio station, send somebody else to did a, do a live broadcast with them. Um, took three people to do it. He set up two uh, stations and they were taking the concentrate and diluting it in buddy jugs. And they were like pouring out of six buddy jugs at a time. Everybody had to bring your own bottle. Um, Gee, I don't know. He gave away a couple hundred gallons of, of disinfectant like a four-hour window. Did he tell you where he got this idea, Tom? <sighs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, he, got it. he got it from the Success MMA group. Yeah, we that that's where that idea came from. One of our members did a very successful campaign way back in the day. Oh, at least three, maybe even four weeks ago. And um, this person's um, what they did was, you know, those huge big drums that you can rent like 500 gallons. He ordered, he rented one of those on a trailer full of water so that he could fill bottles and, um, fill dilute at the same time. He went through all of that stuff. It was crazy. Amazing. So he did that at the same time that he launched the, uh, cleaning for Heroes program. Yeah, we, we can't talk to him anymore. He's too much of a big wake now. <laughs> he's yeah, too popular. He's rock stars. But I guess the, the point is there's a window of opportunity because Heather, you know, joined us yesterday. And I mean, she was on national television, you know, Fox News for, for, for you know, cleaning for heroes. Um, giving away disinfectant is another way that you can get. I mean, it's not completely free. You got to buy some chemicals, but it's cheap as advertisement you're ever going to get. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's not going to be too much longer until people are going to be able to go back to Walmart and the grocery store and get their disinfectant. So if you want to do this, you know, there's a there's a short window here that you can jump in and do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Heather, what are the MMA groups list? <laughs> okay. uh, Heather, yes, she wants. OK. So this is, you guys, I'm sorry. This is Heather pushing me to tell you guys about the MMA groups. These are our mastermind accountability groups. There are three different levels of groups. 
We have a, a starter group, a growth group, and a success group. Um, uh, and they, they have different engagement levels. Uh, if, you, if you just want some basic engagement, then you would be in the starter group. If you want like a little bit um, more engagement and a little bit more accountability, then you'd be in the middle group. If you want a lot of engagement and a lot of accountability, you're gonna end up in the success group. Um, but we will talk more about it next week, Heather. <laughs> if that's okay with you, uh, but that's that's what the groups are. If anybody's interested in hearing more about them, reach out to Heather. Reach out to me. Yeah. I'll ha happily tell you more about it off off this. But you know, um, I have a yeah. we probably got a few you know, interviews going on this afternoon. I you know, face the nation on Sunday. Who knows? <laughs> I, you know, she really is busy because of this. Like we're we're joking around about it, but it, it has been crazy busy for her. So uh, I'm 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 really impressed with how she just boom 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 made this stuff happen. It was pretty impressive. Here's on the view next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you do invite me on with Heather, I want to come on too. Sounds fun. Ah, okay, anybody else have any other questions, any other um, problems, any other things that you're trying to do? Uh, Shannon, I, I will, I'll send you some info, Shannon. I'm writing your name down right now. You don't have to worry about connecting me, or I mean, looking for me. Uh, you know what, one of my favorite teachers, when I was growing up, I just, every time I see your name, I, I think this, so I just have to say it. Um, her name was Mrs. Hazen. And I love her. I tried to get her every year. I did get her three years, but uh, she was a math teacher. And I loved her. You got her really. for three years. And, yeah, she taught three different years. years graduate, got out of that grade, and went on. No. <laughs> oh, shh. <laughs> shh. <laughs> Don't be mean now, Tom. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, there was uh, there. I saw a post came came through that, and I thought you may you might have a little bit of information on Tom. I'm not sure if it was coming through the Wall Street Journal or it's coming through through some news source about some of the um, southern states were already beginning to see some um, um, increases in in numbers. Have you seen that? Come out. No. I was a little bit nervous. I thought maybe you would have it's, a little bit of information. The number of diagnosed cases is, is going up in a number of, 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 of southeastern states, South Carolina being one of them, my home state. Not my home yeah. state, state, state in which I live. It is my home state. I've been here forever in Little Bay. Um, but the number of tests they're doing have grown at even a higher rate. So statistically, it really isn't as alarming that it would look seem to be on the surface, because if you've you know if you've tripled the amount of tests you're doing and the number of cases is only doubled, then that doesn't really mean that it the the, the virus is spreading more. It just means that you're looking harder for cases that have always been there. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense to me. So, um, Leslie, uh, hopefully that's the same situation with you guys doing more testing and that's why your numbers are up. Oh, Audra too, Alabama is having an uptick. Right. So what she's saying, so she's asking, does it kind of balance out then, Tom, or have they determined what's actually going on there? The, 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 the real number would be, you know, the number of positive cases you're, 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 you're getting per, per test. I mean, it's, it's complicated. There's a lot, a lot of things that go into it. Earlier on, the only people that were getting tests were the people that had a high likelihood of having it. You know, they were displaying symptoms and because they didn't have any tests, right? So they were only giving right. it to the people who were, 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 were believed to be the highest risk. Now that they've got more tests out there, they're testing more people that aren't necessarily displaying symptoms. So we think yeah. statistically that the number of positive cases out of a population where you're not handpicking the winners, so to speak, would, yeah. would have, a, have a smaller percentage. Um, from from a lot of what I've read, they believe better indicators are 
hospital admissions and death rates because those would have been constant throughout the whole process with or without you know tests and hospital admissions really uh in, in, in most states seem to be you know leveling off or or, or, or declining um yeah that makes perfect there's some belief that summer has has something to do with it that we're going to see that happening naturally just because these types of viruses tend to just like the flu tend to, to to die off and become less of an issue in the summer the big concern is once we get into the fall and winter it's still going to be out there simmering and is it going to kind of flare up again yeah well i i wonder uh what that means for us you know what we we don't really have any heat yet you see me i've got my jacket on right here i think we're sitting at like 62 or something our hottest day so far this year was 80 and it was like a day and a half long <laughs> you know so much for summer i think we're moving into a fall now i know but I don't. I don't know how it's gonna. How but it's gonna like, work. Like, even in, in Washington State, where you know the summers aren't aren't really as overbearing as they are in in, in the southern states, the flu typically kind of. I mean, the flu isn't as, as as rampant in the summertime, is it? No, it isn't. It does. It does die off too. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, ninety-seven in California, huh, Leslie? Woo. Oh. Okay. That's, that's warm. <laughs> that's really warm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, this is a little bit off topic, but you brought up the 97 degree temperature. And I have a question for you guys. Is anybody struggling with your people um, being upset about having to wear the PPE, the, the booties, the gloves, the she face covered. mask? Yeah, oh yeah, the, why did I get booties? Who said booties yesterday got me going? Heather. Yeah, the shoe covers, the, the gloves, and the face masks in the heat. I have uh, a, a little fringe group that is wanting to, they want uh, tank tops and shorts because it is, um, and they want heat stroke training to be able to manage how they're going to be able to clean in the you know the 80 85 degree temperatures with all their full ppe is anybody else having this concern what are you guys doing how are you handling it heat stroke heat stroke training mm -hmm. yep that's specifically what was asked for heat wow. stroke so if someone gets Heat stroke, what exactly are we supposed to do? And we all need to go through that training because it, it's guaranteed it is going to happen if we're in um, a, a, a short sleeve uniform cotton. So it's not a, it's a cotton material, cotton poly blend and a, um, and shorts, but the PPE is forcing the, the over, the overheating. So my response was about, um, so I had, I have to balance the safety, right? And there's a lot of different, um, things to look about with safety. Um, on the one hand, I need people to be safe in the homes, safe on the COVID front. And right now there are not a lot of, of things that we can do to be safe other than wear our PPE. There are no um, vaccines, there are no, no medications, or there aren't a lot to do. So we have to wear the PPEs, but our bodies will naturally adjust to the increased temperatures as is evidenced by people, you know, um, the, the soldiers in Afghanistan wearing full flax suits, helmets, the big boots, you know, everything else that they're wearing in temperatures well over 100 degrees. Uh, not to say that none of them have um, um, have had heat stroke. I'm, I'm sure that they have in that in those temperatures. But absolutely, our chances of adjusting to heat is better than our chances of adjusting to COVID. So that's that's what we're dealing with right now. But I, 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 I'm. I'm not sure. I was wondering what other people are doing. 
Uh, she even says, I had my reusable shoe covers on yesterday and my client loved them. She's going to buy them for her house. That's awesome. And Linda, I'm emailing the client asking for more AC on the day of service. I bought cooling rags for the staff. Yeah, we don't have AC up here in Washington because we don't typically get, I mean, we, of course, it, it exists, but it's not common here in Washington. It's very uncommon to have um, air conditioning. Uh, no tank tops, but great t-shirts. Shorts are fine, but they need to be long. Right? So similar to what we're doing, Beatrice, I'm curious, do your clients actually request for EPA approved disinfectant? Are you doing it no matter what? My clients really don't care whatsoever. I clean everything as usual and make sure high touch points are clean too. Um, so there was a bigger push for the, for me, I'm talking about me and we'll, we'll let Tom say too about his, um, bigger push for the EPA approved disinfectant earlier on. Uh, we're not hearing a lot about it right now. I actually asked my web guy to pull it off my website that we're doing the free 51 point blah, blah, blah thing. So we're, we're not getting as much now, but we're still using it. We, we have always used uh, that, that disinfectant. So not, not a lot changed for us. We were just educating the customer that, Hey, look what we're doing. It's amazing. It's free. Oh, <laughs> it was free to us because we'd always done it. Right? Um, but uh, we were just using it in that way, but we're going to pull it down now. How, how about you, Tom? Are you guys getting a lot of conversation? Uh, not a lot of discussion about it. I mean, we're, we're offering it. And prior to COVID, we didn't use a disinfectant. Quite honestly, for maintenance cleaning in a, in a house, a high quality microfiber towel and using it properly with just any general purpose cleaner, you're going to get the same efficacy. It's more of a peace of mind thing than it is a real making it safer thing. But psychology matters. And um, if, if your clients feel better, and I could understand why they would, knowing that you're using a disinfectant, that's a, that's a rational thing to do. And if you're going to use a disinfectant, certainly you want to use something that is uh, registered by the EPA. I mean, technically, if it's not, it probably legally couldn't even be called a disinfectant. But a disinfectant that's on the uh, list of approved disinfectants to mitigate the um, SARS-CoV-2 virus, the one that, that, that causes COVID-19, is what you would want to use. Uh, let's see. And Starlene looks like you're having a little bit of trouble, too. Yeah, AC. Yeah, yeah. Wish we had AC. I think that would reduce a lot of our issues. I, you know, I get the point. I mean, deeply appreciate that it, it can be, it can get hot and it's hard work in the summertime, and especially some units are, are, are hotter than others. And wearing a mask is a whole nother degree of complication. And I really don't know what that's going to look like when it really gets hot. I mean, this is, we haven't said it today, this is unprecedented. Yeah, good job, Tom. Yeah. So what, what, what is it going to look like and how hard is that going to be? Um, but you know, we've been we've we've been doing this whole house cleaning thing for a while, and almost every example of have you ever had an instance where blah 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 happens? Like, oh yeah, well that's happened a couple of times here. Um, what scabe scabies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, well I remember back in nineteen ninety eight that. But you know, I don't want you know. The, the bar, I mean, heat stroke is a really serious thing. And I don't believe that we've ever come close to having a diagnosed case of, of that. Have you? No, never. We never have. But and not to take it lightly, not to say that it's not something we'd want to be mindful no. of, make sure that, that, that we're taking all the necessary precautions. But I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if how, well, I'm not sure what the odds of, of us even being, I don't know. Has anybody ever had somebody have a clinically diagnosed case of, of heat stroke? I mean, that requires 911 and EMS. And I mean, yeah, you can get bad outcomes with yeah. that. Yeah, somebody has had that. I would love to know. Uh, oh, check that out. Sorry, you guys, I have to change topics real quick. Martha, hi, Liz and Tom. I'm glad you listened to us, Martha. I just now applied for the Idol, it's now open. It's open again. It was only agriculture. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you're saying. 
It's now open. Hope anyone that didn't get to apply, they can apply now and hopefully get the loan. Oh, Tom's on it. You see when he looks that way? That means he's on it. He's looking, he's looking to see if we can find it. That's great information, Martha. Thank you. We have a lot of people that needed to get that um, uh, idle loan and, and waited just a little bit too long and kind of got pushed out. So hopefully, uh, Rita, PPP question. If you won't use the full 25% of the PPP fund, funds, but can use more than 75% on payroll. Yes, absolutely. Anyone know how much of that payroll over the 75% may be forgiven or is the limit 75? No, you can use all of it. You can use 100% of that on um, payroll, on paychecks, and get 100% of it forgiven, uh, Rita. But you can also use as little as 75% and then 25% on your operating cost. To, and that's another way of getting 100%. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, you can you can use the whole thing. And I think that they would probably prefer that, right? Because the point of the PPP is to protect those paychecks. Uh, Ekaterina, thank you again, Liz and Tom, for your everyday work. Here I have a question. We know, and now everyone knows, so-called quad. Disinfectants take about 10 minutes to disinfect. What about rubbing alcohol, 70%? What's dwell time? What's dwell time for uh, rubbing alcohol, Tom? Do you know? I don't. That's such a good question. I don't have a clue, Ekaterina. I can't wait. Yeah, I would just be guessing. I can consult with Janice, who's the resident expert on all things related to the chemistry of cleaning. And that would I can be awesome. We can get you an answer for that on Monday. How about that? Yeah, that sounds great. I will. Um, I'm marking it down right now, Ekaterina, and we'll have an answer on, on Monday. That's such a great question. Isn't that funny that we've never even thought to look that up or hear about anything? My, uh, my, my belief is it's a shorter time, but there's... It's a complicated answer because it depends what pathogens you're trying to kill too, because not every disinfectant kills the same pathogens, but we'll get you, that's a good question. It deserves a good answer. So we'll come back Monday and we'll have that for you. Yeah. And if he's going to consult with Janice, <laughs> we're going to have a really good answer. You guys really, really good. What'd you pull up Tom? Is this the information yeah. about the um, According to the SBA website, they're still only doing this for, come on, behave, for agriculture. You're welcome, Rita. Uh, well, I, I mean, if Martha was able to push one through, maybe they're, I don't know. Martha, give us a little bit more information. That sounds awesome. You know what? You can click on the link and go through the steps, and who knows? Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time we found a glitch, y'all. Right? As Check long it as out. Anybody that has it. Yeah, as long as you're answering the questions as, as, as you know, clearly and as honestly as you can, I don't think you have absolutely anything to lose. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. that sounds great to me. And, and congratulations, you know, Martha. And they might even, and even if they aren't looking at the applications for house cleaning businesses at the moment, it very well might be in queue. Whereas if more money has become available here over the next couple of weeks, you're already in line. Ready to go. It appears that they will let you fill this out regardless of what you know of, of whatever your circumstance is yes yeah. they're not saying yeah. you know you're not a farmer no you can't do this I, I that's not the feel i'm getting is there any question on there did you look is there any question that where you have to choose where it says that you are an agricultural business yeah. ask the question applicants agricultural enterprise not more than 500 but it also asks is a business with not more than 500 so this would be what we would check but it says only choose one yeah and i can go down here and say oh you got to check uh, all of them though yeah i'm not a terrorist i'm not cooking meth in the bathtub i'm not i'm not i'm not um, i'm 
I'm so excited to hear these answers since we're business partners. It's making yeah. me feel so but, good about oh, working out. You finally, you, you got the answers you were looking for. <laughs> but it, it didn't, you know, if, if, if I was disqualified because I wasn't in agriculture, it would seem like it would say, sorry, we're not, you know, yeah. they might be processing them, but that doesn't mean, let's go back and read this again. At this time, only agricultural business applications will be accepted. Hmm. But I just told them I'm not an agricultural business and it looks like that they're letting me go through the application process. Wherever she went, it didn't ask if she was out agricultural or not. Did you go to the SBA website, Martha? Is that where you went to get your application or give us a little bit more detail? I'd love to hear about that. Oh, we don't have very much time though. Tom, can you, um, while she's going to give us this information, do you mind pulling up information, show everybody the links, uh, clean business Sure. Like yeah. Cleaning business today. You guys know where we are. Subscribe here. If uh, you haven't subscribed, just your email, first name, last name. Um, we're actually picking our game up in cleaning business today. I'm kind of excited about some of the some of the things we've been able to do. Um, a lot of summer interns don't have summer interns, and we've got some really talented help here uh, over the summer. And we're doing a lot of stuff, so you're going to be seeing a lot of stuff coming out of cleaning business today over the next few months. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. And coronavirus downloads. I'll drop this in the whole linky thing here down at the bottom. This has all of the. Um, information downloads articles that we've shared the super duper spreadsheet which is probably going to change again over the next couple of weeks uh, on how to calculate your loan forgiveness is there the actual ppp application which is probably going to change too is there for, for, for download um if we find out anything more about how to apply for the idle loan in a way that looks like it would be strategically helpful we'll we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll i mean we'll share that i said monday tuesday we're not here monday right we're not here monday no nope, right i was testing you liz i was going to see if you caught that um <laughs> tuesday you know we'll we'll, we'll 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 try to find you know share any of that information and we'll uh have some information about the do's and don'ts using alcohol as a disinfectant as well uh, real quick, a couple of people have hit me up offline. Yes, my mom is out of the hospital and she has been for three days and looking good. Thank you, everybody, for asking about that. It's kind of you. She's fine. Um, Tom, can you share, also go to Modern Cleaning and share? We had a couple of questions. Linda wants to know, um, is session three out yet? Yes, indeed. It uh, is. Session three went out yesterday yesterday afternoon should have gotten an email on, and if you've signed up for the class you should have gotten an email on that and and if for, you haven't signed up waiting for session three for class number three to come out okay time to sign up class three is out yeah. um also linda i have you on my list of people that would like more information about the mma groups amelia i've got you down too so i'll i'll, I'll reach out to all three of you guys shannon linda and amelia and, and anything else here, Tom? Well, we're not not today. You know, I guess we've had some people kind of hitting us up, wanting to see a little bit about what the classes are like in um, PHC. And if next week, if anybody wants to, we could probably show some 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 previews of some of that if if we want. Could we do it Tuesday? Tuesday would be awesome if we could do that. Start we're not, the week we're out not really doing Monday, we we're 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 closed on Monday. Tuesday we could That's do. why I said Tuesday. <laughs> we can do it on Tuesday. All right. So if you guys want to see some trailers, uh, uh, join us on Tuesday, and we'll see. Uh, what I would love, really love it if we could show a little bit of help. I think that program it, or that class is going to be really awesome for people to be able to see. Oh, Linda did not receive an email about session three coming out, Tom. Linda Cavesos. I, I probably am pronouncing that wrong, Linda. I'm, I apologize. 
but okay. yeah, she didn't receive an email. Um, I like, I like that. We're we're moving everything over to a new platform that's going to make this so much easier. I mean, the re what's really happening here is this has become so much bigger than what we really, you know, planned on. <laughs> so, More we people. Yeah, we didn't have all the tools in place to handle the volume that we had. So we're moving over and keeping all of this straight through this transition in terms of keeping everybody's enrollment straight, and the students assigned to the right companies and making sure everybody's getting the right communication. My poor daughter Kate is losing her mind right now. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit choppy here over the next couple of weeks as we're we're making our way through that. But I promise you, once we make it through that valley to the other side and we're on the platform that is big enough to handle the administrative side of all of this, it's really gonna be it's gonna be an awesome thing. Oh, Shannon didn't get the email either, Tom. <sighs> okay. Well, that's good info. Thank you, that guys. Is, uh, that, that, that seems uh -huh. to be a trend. So you should yeah. be getting an email for for every time we we we, we go up the new class because we'll have more classes coming out next week. So, yeah. I mean, and so it's not going to last long. But we got like two more weeks of classes coming out, something like that. So uh, should be should hopefully you'll be able to see those real real quick. Uh, all right, I know that we are running out of time. No, we're out of we time. We are out of time. An hour. Well, we got an hour and one minute and 30 seconds, so we said up to an hour and two minutes. So we well, got 20 seconds. seconds now. Okay, you guys, tomorrow, don't forget, three-day weekend. Everybody get some rest. Enjoy the weather. Get outside and have a, have a great holiday. Think about us. We'll be thinking about you. Yeah, be safe. We'll see you Tuesday, 5 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye,